Hey guys, welcome to the Whiskey Loot channel. You've got Joel and Tim here. We're gonna be tasting the signature vintage. It's a special cask release, independent bottling in fact, from the Glenlivet Distillery. So we're gonna be checking it out and making sure we unpack this whiskey in its all might and glory. So stay tuned. All right, so the story here is that we're talking about 62.2%. This is so, cast yeah. strength, single cask as well? So yeah, another single cask, cast strength, being signatory vintage. Um, off the top of my head, they only have like a few different bottling strengths, which is, if it's a really odd number, like 62.2%, then it's natural cast strength, that's it. Out now. <laughs> and they have a reputation, we've even tried something from signatory vintage before, I believe, yep. maybe a few months ago, but completely different distillery, which that's what's the beauty of independent bottlers, you know. You can keep going back to the same independent bottler, but everything is just so wildly different because they don't have those limitations of um, making it themselves and, and whatnot. So even cask variety, we're going to the opposite end of the spectrum here. So this one has spent its entire life in one single sherry butt, and it's only 14 year old, years old, and signature vintage as well no chill filtration, natural cast strength, everything's like pretty much dump it from the cask and that's it. So, so I'm, I'm guessing here that, that our recommendation would be taste it. Yeah. A little bit, not the whole thing. Taste it again with some water. Yeah. So just, just get a, a teaspoon worth of water um, and taste it like that because there's gonna be a lot of differences and, and that's what we'll do here as well. Yeah. Uh, so you can follow along. Uh, but let's start with the, the straight uh, as it is. I think there's no right or wrong answer there, right? Like, if you're not comfortable to drink it at 62.2% straight, there's nothing wrong to go yeah. straight for the water or exactly. straight for the ice or whatever you feel like is best. Obviously, you know, ice does dull down the flavours, but that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes. <clears throat> Immediately, you can smell that LED, <laughs> like that oil richness. But it is not as stringent, it's not burning my nostril. <laughs> no, not at all. You know, it's not overpowering. It, it is, I'm guessing, going to be a, a lot more sherry influenced. Yeah, oh, the, the nose is wildly different from yeah. the other two. Definitely those, immediately the dark fruits is what gets me. Like, I don't get that light, fragrant, apple -y pears no, and peaches. It's, it's straight away to those prunes, dates, raisins, um, those kinds of flavours. Or aromas. Maybe even a little bit chocolatey, like a cocoa. A bit chewy. Like that, that, that flavour profile that you, I'm, I'm expecting to be kind of butterscotch and toffee. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot more deep in those, in those cherry flavour profiles, really. Yeah. Definitely there's a good amount of spice there. It's classic sherry cask, you know, like yeah. dark fruits, baking spices, Christmas cake, yeah. all the good things. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like there's there's a lot of sherry cask whiskies and we've, yeah. we've featured a lot um, on the advanced subscription uh, that, that you guys are on now. They're a bit as of a well crowd as... favourite amongst our subscribers, I think. Exactly, <laughs> as well as other, other um, boxes we've had in the past. But what that sets this one apart, I guess, is a little bit of the history and the comparison of the Glenlivet, yeah. how it comes into independent bottling, what they do to kind of change that, and, and obviously it's a single cask mm -hmm. um, for a longer period of time, 14, oh, sorry, 14 shorter years. period of time, yeah. 14 years, but it is selected and kind of put in that cask yeah. um, on purpose. Yeah, and I mean, what's I think so incredible is just how much flavor comes from those sherry casks, because Thinking about it, you know, if these went straight into an American oak ex bourbon barrel without it being recoupered, American standard barrels, what, like 250 litres or thereabouts? Um, this one has gone straight into a first fill sherry butt, but a sherry butt is like can be double the size nearly yeah. of an American barrel. So, um, but still, look how much colour, flavour, everything that's extracted from that. It's pretty crazy. At four years less as well. Mm. Woo! That's exciting. Oof. That is just so different. I was not expecting I that was at not all. I was not expecting that. <laughs> 
Honestly, if you put them side by side and of... didn't tell me, I would be like, that's not even the same distillery. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, with all three of them. <laughs> yeah, like, they're vastly different. And you, you can obviously find the similarities, but I think that differences speak louder than the similarities. It's um, so earthy and chocolatey. That, yeah, that, that kind of nutmeg, ginger, spice, chocolate, cacao. You know, it's, it's very rich and, and the, the oiliness on the mouth just kind of is glue on your tongue. Like it just sticks around. The earthiness for me, I, maybe it's because I'm looking at it, but it <laughs> kind of is like a dusty old book kind of vibe. I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> Whenever I think about dusty old books, I think about black books. <laughs> but that cacao, those tannins, the, the, the finish is very elongated. Yeah, the spice on that is big, like mm. really big spice. This is this is a whiskey. How would you be drinking this? Maybe not with your, your mates that come over for a footy night. No. <laughs> this is this is probably a bit of more of a special occasion. Uh, drinking it, you know, to celebrate an event. Yeah. Uh, this is this is something definitely to drink by yourself and just enjoy it. And the the pleasure of of, of a uh, car strength whiskey that really has a shitload of flavour. This is yeah. this is punching above its weight. Um, oh, yeah. per, per mil in terms of flavour that it can extract. I mean, it's just so ridiculously complex and full of flavour. Should we, tr I think we should try this one with a little bit of water and see yeah, I, how I'm it really kind of enjoying that, up. but I think I do need to top it up a little bit <laughs> so that the water's not 50% of it. <laughs> I'm gonna put, do you want some more? Um, no, I should be okay, I think. No, it's alright. I'm just gonna put a few drops in there. Oh, there we go. Uh, you don't need to use this at home, you can just <laughs> use a teaspoon. Um, We're very exact. We're all about the science here at Whiskey Loot. <laughs> not getting a massive amount of difference on the nose. Not huge. I think the spice tames down a little bit and maybe the fruity notes come out a little bit more. Yeah, but... more pears, more apple. Which is, that's kind of cool because that brings out that more classic Glenlivet DNA. Definitely sweetens up the taste a little bit. It does, yeah. Less, that spice comes a little bit more into check mm. and which kind of um, dominated all the fruity notes and it lets the fruity notes and the sweetness come yep. through and definitely makes it a much more easy drinking whiskey, that's for sure. Yeah. Now the comparison of water to ice as a kind of a refresher for our audience yep. as well, that's very much going to not only dilute, Water, yeah. well, I mean, the ice will melt, right? Yeah. But it's going to kind of freeze out a lot of those oils and it's going to reduce the flavour yeah. complexity that you really get on the nose and on the palate. Yeah, definitely. Like a lot of those volatile um, aromas at the lower temperature will just stay tightly packed in there so you won't get them at all. Um, your sense of taste will be dulled slightly. Um, so we're, we're just using room temperature water, yeah. it's not ice cold or anything. Yeah. Like that. And I mean, you can be, you can, you'd be surprised at how vigorous you can be with a little bit of water um, with these ones that are 60%, you know, because, yeah. you know, you're pure already, mass. You're, you're dropping it down to 40, so that's an extra <laughs> 20 on there. Exactly, least. you've got to put a fair chunk of water for it yeah. to be so you're in 700 the same ballpark as that to original a if, <laughs> <laughs> if you exactly. want to play that maths. Yeah. I de honestly, I definitely think, and I just put a tiny bit more water again in mine, I definitely think in this case, I prefer it with that little bit of water. Like, I'm all for cast strength whiskey when it makes sense. Um, I'm not saying that's not good, I'm just saying that for me personally, I definitely prefer this one with a little bit of water. I'd say I'd be leaning more towards cast strength. I feel like the flavours are jumping a little bit stronger for me. Um, but I'm definitely getting more sweetness on the water. So that's kind of the comparison I'm thinking in my head. And that's the thing, it's always such a personal, taste is always so personal, right? Exactly. Completely different sense of taste here, um, which means just for you guys out there, 
play around with it, find what works for you best. There's no right or wrong answer to how to drink whiskey. Um, if that's with ice, without ice, with water, without water, whatever. There are no rules. The only rule is drink it however the hell you like it best. Exactly. <laughs> Now, now this bottle here, is this a limited edition as, as well as being uh, car strength or have they got, got enough volume of this? Well, I mean, it does say on the bottle here, we've got number 121 of 598. Yeah. Um, so obviously every cask is going to be a slightly different gonna percentage? It's going to be different. Um, different percentage, different quantity of bottles potentially as well. Um, when it's natural car strength, you know, depending on the conditions that, that barrel was stored in. Um, more evaporation versus less evaporation. Being a sherry, but you know, there's nearly 600 bottles there rather than the American barrels, which you might get less than 300. So being an independent bottling, very unlikely you will see another comparable barrel from Glenlivet from this independent bottler, that's for sure. Because, you know, that's the nature of independent bottling. It's kind of like, find a really good barrel, one really good barrel, do something with it, and then that's it. Move yeah. on to something completely different, so. Yeah, oh, that's the name of the game with them. So if you like it, you enjoy it, you want it to be part of your collection. Yeah. And you've I only think... got one choice, because it's probably gonna <laughs> not be around for much longer. I think the thing people have to remember as well is, in their heads, 598 barrels, or what, bottles, sorry, not barrels. Um, sounds like a big number, but you have to think that's, that's what's worldwide. exactly in the world, not what actually makes its way to Australia. So, I mean, even if we're lucky and we get 10%, it's only 50 bottles, it's not an awful lot. Yeah. So considering that we've already taken some of those and put it into the packs, which you guys all get to try, yeah. exactly. how many actual bottles are left there? And you know, Australia tends to be a little bit of a year behind everywhere else in getting stuff here from shipping times and whatnot. So, um, you know, by the time you try this, those 598 bottles, there may only be 50 left. <laughs> So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the independent bottling signature vintage Glen Livet. Something very different and very special, quite unexpected from the Glen Livet distillery. If you want to see more reviews like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and a little bell as well so you get notified when all our videos are coming out. Plus, let us know down in the comments if you want all other different whiskies reviewed, anything you want to know about, let us know and we'll make the content. Until next time guys, cheers. Have a good one.